Hey, welcome back again. As we continue this journey on the Java syntax, I want to show you real quick a um, example using the loop, the while loop. Okay, so let me blast this out of here. This is the example we were working on before. Okay, and let's just do this. I like doing that. Um, let's say we have int countdown. And then I'm going to print out a just a prompt. So system dot out dot print line first while loop. And then we're going to set our countdown to three. It's an assignment. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say while countdown is greater than zero. We're just going to say system.out.println welcome to the best channel on YouTube. And then we're going to decrement countdown by one because who are my C++ students? What do you think? Why? Why? Why am I decrementing count down? Well, if you said because if you don't decrement count down, you will run into an infinite loop. Ding, ding, ding. You got the correct answer. Remember, with a while loop, the structure of the while loop in terms of the header, you only have the ability to compare and get a true or false value versus if you had a a um, a for loop you can do a little bit more now that's not to say that we can't use a postfix or prefix expression here ah you didn't think about that right I can do this right I can do countdown minus minus and then I won't really need line 10 so there's many ways to do this but let's just do it the easy way um, for those of you that are not familiar with with postfix and prefix and if you want to know what postfix and prefix are please check out my C++ course now um, we can end the loop here the print line and then end of first while loop and that's great so let's see if we can get this rocking and rolling so you see the compilation it says first while loop so this is coming from line five and then it's going to go down the loop right syntactically there's not there's no difference between c plus plus and java it stays the same you have a keyword called while you have your parentheses and anything that goes in here must return back a true or false or a boolean expression no semicolons out of place you have a compound statement and then you can put anything you want here in your body. So again, no changes. That's the way the while loop works. We're still looking at a pretest loop. So you're going to compare this, right? If it's true, we enter the body, we come back up, right? If it's true, we enter the body, we come back up. If this is false, then it does break out. Okay. So again, no, no new, things here in terms of the language. Now let's take a look at a do while. I did clean it up a bit here. I commented out the while loop so that we don't get confused. So we still have our countdown integer type, remember primitive, right? And then the do while syntactically still stays the same. It's a post test loop, meaning that the least number of times that a post test loop will execute is going to be once because it doesn't do the comparison first it actually executes the body first so it's going to execute the body it's going to print out my cool message welcome again to the best channel on youtube decrement the countdown variable by one and then do the comparison if it's greater than zero then we come back all the way up to line 15 and then do that again 16 and 17 whatever lines are within your compound statement in the do while so let's run this real quick so I can show you I'm not tricking you. 
Okay, so there we have it. We have the do while loop there executing three times. And as I said, uh, I was getting an error because I didn't initialize countdown to three. So that should be solving that. So if you did, we're, we're getting an error. Um, make sure you initialize countdown to three or else you're going to get an, an error. Okay, so again, just in terms of the logic, post test loop, it's going to execute the body first and then check the condition. And this condition is always, it's got to give you a true or a false. Lastly, I'm going to go into the for loop and that loop is a pretest loop. So let's take a look at that one now. So again, as you see, the for loop syntax does not change. It's still similar to C++ or even we can even look at if you come from a C-sharp background, it's still similar. Now, Python, I wouldn't know because I've never, never had the time to pick up Python. So I wouldn't know how the Python for loop is. But I can tell you that C++, C-sharp, similar f syntax. You have your initialization in this section here. Then you have your Boolean expression. And then you have your update. And the way that this works is we all we always execute this first, but it executes first, but never again. So I becomes one. We compare if this is true, we print out. So you see that we printed out one all the way up to nine. Remember less than right, because when it becomes 10, when I becomes 10, this will be false and we never get to print out I. The, the what I'm using here is a single line for loop, but usually what you'll do is you'll have a body with a compound statement here and that doesn't change. So again, very, very similar to C++. Syntactically, things like that will not change. Now, there is one more loop that I did not cover, but I am going to cover it now because there is no equivalent. Well, at least, well, there is an equivalent now in C++ 11 or 10. The for, it's, it's what we call the for each loop, the for each loop. But you'll get more familiar with this when you are dealing with a list or array. So I'll give you a small taste of it. And then we'll be using it more and more as we go on through the semester and we pick up more object oriented concepts. But let me give you a, a, um, an example. So this is a for what we call a for each loop. And first I've included my java.util.star package because I need the array list so to show you the example. I have an array list here. I've declared it of string. So that means that my array list is going to contain strings in there. Um, my variable name is called some list. Okay. And I've instantiated an object of array list. Now I'm able to add strings to my array list. So I added monkey, donkey, and dog. Now I want to loop through and just print these out. So how do I do that with a for each uh, loop? Well, with the syntax, we don't, we don't longer have to initialize anything. All we have to do is first we match the data type with the data type of whatever list you're trying to iterate through. So in this case, we're using the string array list. So we'll use a string variable to go through each item. The name of your variable could be anything. I just chose to name it item. It could be anything you want. I could name it thing, item two, item one, animal, doesn't really matter. Then you have this colon syntax, which says for each item in my sum list, sum list being my array list, go through it in sequential order. So what's basically happening is it's going to go forward. We, we can only go forward with a for, for each loop. Uh, we'll start at, at monkey, right? And monkey gets assigned item. Or uh, actually, the other way around. Item gets assigned the value monkey. Then inside the loop, item could we could do anything we want with item. We're just printing it out. So we printed out item, which is monkey. Come back up. Again, loop goes forward, goes over here. Now item becomes donkey. Print it out. And then again, 
item becomes dog we print it out and then it just breaks out automatically so the beauty of this is it's very very easy to use the for each loop when you have a list of some kind with a variable a templated um, data type very very easy this is my preferred way of looping in object-oriented programming languages except when I have to do when I have to go backwards if I had to go backwards then this really won't work because again the for each loop can only go forward okay so this is the additional loop we didn't really cover this in C++ but now we're covering it in Java and there's just the way the syntax works okay so hopefully you learned a lot about the little basic syntaxes and that's it I think we pretty much are clear with the syntax in Java just the things that that we're just going over uh, in terms of just the programming language syntax and, and coding and all that. Next video, we're going to start with the object-oriented concepts. So hope to see you there.